Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Israeli forces kill three Palestinians in Nablus raid. Muslim students face restrictions in entering colleges in Indian state. Minnesota students demand justice for Amir Locke. And millions face severe hunger in Horn of Africa. In our first story, Israeli forces killed three Palestinians during a raid in the occupied West Bank on February 8th. Three men were travelling in a car in the city of Nablus when they were shot. According to Wafa News, they have been identified as Ashraf Mubaslat, Adam Mabruka and Mohammed Dahil. An Israeli Special Forces unit entered the al makfiya locality in a civilian vehicle on Tuesday. Images from Tuesday's attack show the Palestinians' car riddled with bullets. Israel has claimed that the men had been responsible for a series of shootings in the area. Activists and rights groups have condemned the killings as an extrajudicial execution. The three were members of the largely defunct Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. The resistance group is associated with the Fatah Party, which is part of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Thousands of people gathered for the three men's funeral later on Tuesday. Palestinians in the village of Beita near Nablus and Kalandia in Jerusalem held protests late at night. A one-day general strike was also observed across the occupied West Bank on February 9th in solidarity with the men killed. Israel is known to deploy excessive and disproportionate force in clear violation of due process rights. It has also recently amended its open fire rules, expanding what has already been called a shoot to kill policy. We now go to the state of Karnataka in India, where Muslim students are facing increasing harassment. Hijab wearing students have been barred from educational institutions in several parts of the state. The issue first came to light at a government college in the Udupi district in late December. Six Muslim students have been protesting for over a month after being told that they would not be allowed inside the classroom with a headscarf. The college claimed that the garment violated the dress code and that the students had given commitments regarding this earlier. After two days of hearings, the Karnataka High Court had referred the students' petitions to a larger bench. The freedom to practice one's religion is enshrined as a fundamental right to the Indian constitution. There is a precedent in India where courts have ruled that the right to wear a hijab does fall under constitutional guarantees. On February 3rd, 28 hijab-wearing students were denied entry into a junior college in Kundapur. On February 7th, the government college in Udupi allowed the protesting students to enter the campus. However, they were made to sit in a separate section. Students and protesters wearing saffron-coloured shawls associated with the Hindu right have also confronted the Muslim students in several places. The BJP-led state government has shut down high schools and colleges for three days. Protests and gatherings within a 200-metre radius of all education institutions have also been banned for two weeks in the state capital. The situation has been, in Karnataka has been condemned as part of the growing sectarian threats and violence under the right-wing BJP government. Next, we go to the United States where students in Minnesota held a statewide school walkout on February 8th. The protests were organized by the Minnesota teen activist group to demand justice for Ahmed Locke. The 22-year-old was shot and killed by Minneapolis Police Department officers on February 2nd. Police entered the apartment where he was sleeping and ex by executing a no-knock warrant. Officer Mark Hanman then shot him three times within 10 seconds. Body camera footage showed Locke just waking up and reaching for a gun with his hand on the trigger. Police claimed that he had pointed the gun towards them and they had repeatedly announced police search warrant before entering the apartment. The body camera footage proves both these claims to be false. Several protests have been organized in Minnesota since last week. Nearly 1,000 people marched to the first police precinct in Minneapolis on February 5th. On Friday, Mayor Jacob Frey announced a moratorium on no-knock warrants. However, many have pointed out that he had already claimed to have banned the practice in late 2020. According to University of St. Thomas professor Rachel Moran, Minneapolis police have requested at least 90 such warrants since then. Students marched to the Minnesota governor's mansion on Tuesday demanding a proper ban on no-knock warrants. They also demanded the demilitarization of the police and the resignation of the Minneapolis mayor and police chief. And for our final story, the World Food Programme has stated that around 13 million people in the Horn of Africa are facing severe hunger. Pastoral and farming communities in large parts of Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia have been affected by drought. Forecasts have predicted lower than average rainfall in the coming months which could make conditions even worse. The region has witnessed three consecutive failed rainy seasons causing a shortage of water and pasture. This has ruined harvests and led to abnormally high rates of livestock deaths. Access and affordability have also been impacted by rising food prices, inflation and the low demand for agricultural labour. The crisis also forced families to flee their homes. An estimated 5.5 million children in the region are at risk of acute malnutrition. Another 1.4 million are facing severe acute malnutrition. The UN has warned that the number could rise by another 50% if the rains do not arrive within the next three months. The conditions in the region are also increasingly vulnerable to climate change. The UN had warned last year that over 100 million extremely poor people across Africa were being threatened by the accelerating crisis. The continent is warming at a faster rate than the world average, despite accounting for less than 4% of greenhouse emissions. 
And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.